Senna just bullied people off the track and Schumacher literally fed off what Senna had done and treated his car as a weapon in desperate in desperate situations when he couldn't think of anything else to do when he was scared that somebody was going to overtake him he just either parked it in the wall at Rascas or pushed them off into the gravel and he got rightly penalised for those things it was a terrible way to drive a car that's the frustrating thing with all of this is that Max is so good and then he just has these moments where the red mist descends and he just he just resorts to bully boy tactics and he doesn't need to do it. He doesn't get out of Q1, he finishes in 8th, he's a gazillion miles behind Max Verstappen. Anyone, shares, I said it to you now and I'll say it to you again, anyone, just put anyone else in the car, it doesn't matter because that dude's proven himself beyond reasonable doubt, incapable of doing what he needs to do in that car. The cost now outweighs the benefit going forward as far as Checo Perez is concerned. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Shakedown Podcast with me, my brethren, my compadres, my right honourable colleagues, the one that they call Sir Baxty and one that they call Shazinho, aka the A-side. How are we doing, chaps? It doesn't matter how you're doing. Because there are very many threads, F1 threads, at which we need to pull. Mats Verstappen, Lando Norris, turn four, turn seven. Talk to me. So Baxty, how do you characterise those manoeuvres and who done it? Well, before uh, before I answer that, I just want to say, look, you know, I upset a lot of people last week and I don't like doing that. So I just want to apologise to absolutely nobody. I feel vindicated, vindicated because my criticisms of Max got borne out again this week. Full send Max Verstappen was guilty. Yeah, British bias Baxter, you know, change those letters and make them Baxter knows best, BKB, yeah, and stick that on a t shirt. Because yeah, turn yeah. four, he broke all the rules. You yeah, know, those rules that you upheld are like a sacred document, like the Bible, put it on, put them side by side as equals. All of a sudden, they're trash because your favorite driver got, uh, you know, got penalised by them, even though they were applied in the exact same way. This time, though, the difference was that Lando was ahead of Max, not the other way around. So therefore, Lando was entitled to racing room. And therefore, when Max shoved him off, therefore, that's a penalty for, uh, for Max. And he got 10 seconds, which is technically, by the FIA standards, the correct thing to do. Uh, now, they didn't do that to George in... Cota, I'm already predicting the responses here. So I'm like, well, okay, that's where we can then criticise inconsistent stewarding. But by the letter of the law and by the punishments available to the FIA stewards, as was stated by Autosport, who did their jobs as journalists and asked the FIA these questions, <laughs> they said that th that penalty for Max was correct. And then the second one was pure and simple, send it down the inside receipt because he didn't like what had happened and he also did it deliberately because he knew exactly what the stakes were. Um, both of those incidents were on Max Verstappen. Both of them were 10 second penalties. Both the stewards got it absolutely right. Thank you very much. Mic oh. drop. Oh, why don't you say how you really feel, Sir Baxty? Let me, you know what? I will see you that and raise you this. Uh, I don't disagree necessarily with anything that you said. But as far as the British bias narrative, Max, I saw Damon Hill coming out and saying that Max Verstappen is incapable of racing fairly. So I hang on, ha ha hang on, that, that that sits firmly outside of his, of his driving philosophy. I heard Brundle come out and say that it was ridiculous as far as a move. I've heard Mark Priestley, F1 Elvis, come out and say something similar. Lewis has laughed at the plumes of smoke because he said that Max Verstappen, he knew it was Max Verstappen as soon as he saw the plumes and he saw on turn seven. Uh, is this not back, uh, back Steve, let me let me pitch the question at you this way when you see all of these like damon brundle bloody lewis george george saying everybody agrees apart from max there were 20 of us in the room 19 agreed that we need to institute for check can you understand back Steve, why if i were cameron who was born and bred in the netherlands let's say why i'd be reading all these things and saying hang on you lot might be, it, it's harsh, but it's fair to a certain extent 
But this is the British buzz that I've been talking about all the while. Martin Brundle even had to come out and apologise for some of his comments. Do, what do you? How do you? Uh, how do you respond to that, Sebasti? A lot of British people work in Formula One, and a, a lot of them are calling Max out for his nonsense. And it's the lowest grade response that you could possibly give because you can't win the argument, so therefore blame the blame, blame the nationality. Fernando Alonso pulled the exact same trick for years post his year with Lewis Hamilton. The simple fact is you've got some... I mean, some of these people were the same ones that were praising Max for his hard racing in previous years. So the shoe can't now be on the other foot. It, it's either bad all the way or good. You can't just change your mind because, you know, oh, well, actually, yeah. You know, he's always race hard. He's always pushed the boundaries and overstepped the boundaries. And he's done it many times. This is just the latest in in a line of times that Max has gone over, overboard. You know, I could sit here and list a, a variety of examples, uh, but alas, no, uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's it's just criticism, you know, from a sport that is made up not almost entirely of, but predominantly British people. Seven of the teams are based in Britain, so therefore you're going to get a lot of British interest <clears throat> in the sport. And at the end of the day, people are just expressing an opinion. And if people want to disagree with it, that's fine. But at least try and have a logical argument and not just go, oh, well, you're British and biased because it's a British driver that's getting a, getting on the raw end of it. Well, was it British bias when Kimi Raikkonen was on the receiving end of it or when Sebastian Vettel was on the receiving end of it or when Charles Leclerc was on the receiving end of it? No, it wasn't. So what makes it different now? Oof. Preach, Sebasti. Shez, chime in on this chap. Turn four, turn seven. Who was to blame in principle? Uh, well, first of all, I, I can't believe that, that Baxi's come back. He's he's so Britishly biased. It's, it's, I, I cannot believe he's here. Go, go, go away. I'm just joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, look, it was just, um, I'm not sure I can really add much more to what Baxi said, but, but if we're, if we're looking directly at what the rules say and how they're supposed to be applied, they were applied exactly the same way in Austin as they were in Mexico. Um, it's just that, as you say, Lando, understood the game this time and got to the apex first at turn four. And unfortunately, Max then got angry because I can't see any other reason that he would have dive bombed into a non-overtaking spot. Um, full lock. Uh, if, you, if you saw his steering angle uh, as he was heading into the into the runoff area, he was uh, never going to make that corner. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a little bit of a... Uh, yeah... It, it wasn't it wasn't a, a particularly uh, nice move uh, at turn seven um and, and look my, my my feeling about all of this is that although the majority of the time max keeps it just within the bounds of what is allowed it what is allowed seems to have been dictated a little bit about by what he how he drives my main example for that is the fact that in 2022 you had that line in the in the guidelines that said that the defending driver um had to stay on track for the for the move to count whereas they've taken that out so so it means that the defending driver can go wherever they want and that plays directly into how max drives against his opponents and yeah, it's effective, and yeah, it's within the rules. But man, I, I don't like it. It's not. It's not a fun way to watch Grand Prix racing because I don't get to see corner after corner action. All I see is one corner controversy, penalty, or like you know, I wait for three or four laps until I see the penalty. I don't know which way it's going to go. I'm not going to understand why that penalty was given. I then have to try and explain to my wife like why two incidents that looked exactly the same were given two completely different penalties. Now I understand why, but I shouldn't need to have an Encyclopedia Britannica out to like explain what looks the same. And 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 unfortunately, it's the same driver. This happens to every single time. I just I just want to go back to 
to to to fun fun overtakes that yeah. I can I can goggle yeah. over. Yeah, Shez, you're like the rest of the F1 muggles. You just want to go back to F1 Snowflake, right? Yeah. Tiddly, tiddlywinks. Love it. Kumbaya settings, you know what I mean? After you clawed, that's what you want, Shez. That's not really what it was uh, like, though, was it? Well, mate. Uh, I don't all, think it was. All, all I will say to you is this. I think there is something. Look, if you take Max Verstappen out of this automotive pugilism equation, I would contend that even with his very unique brand of of wheel to wheel racing the f1 is a much poorer sporting endeavor with max no longer in there right like i just think i i, I get what you guys are saying and i and I, as much as i want to play devil's advocate i can't really i don't really have a case but i think i think max Mate, I, I like that he weaponizes fear in the rest yeah. of them, right? I do, Shez. Chariots of yeah. fire settings, harks back to earth and center. And Didn't like it in center. Uh, Didn't like it in Schumacher. Well, it's a fine not... line. It's a fine line. No, though, between... I, don't, I don't think like... it is. Both those guys were bullies. And and they did it for different reasons, but but Senna just bullied people off the track. And Schumacher you literally fed off what Senna had done and treated his car as a weapon in desperate in desperate situations when he couldn't think of anything else to do when he was scared that somebody was going to overtake him he just either parked it in the wall at Raskas or pushed them off into the gravel and he got rightly penalized for those things it was a terrible way to drive a car wow you say you say terrible do you define terrible as winning seven championships he didn't a, he didn't it, win it, it, every it. one of those seven championships oh. by driving like that by the time by the time he was able to regularly win titles he didn't need to do that he did win his first title driving like that yes he did and he also <laughs> lost a championship by doing it by doing the True. same thing yeah yeah I would contend if we're talking about Michael, I don't think Wayne Rooney is the analogy that I'd use as far as a footballer you can't separate out whatever that is that x factor that that ability to to so ruthlessly and um, without compunction, step over the line. Whatever that is, Shez and Baxter, you can't take that out of a Senna or a Michael or a Maximilian Verstappen because that makes them a different driver then. I like that Max is a fire-breathing dragon when it gets techie. I like that Lando Norris is having to think differently, approach his wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with Max Verstappen because he's posing Lando Norris a question that he doesn't he doesn't yet have the answer to and I, i'm i'm mate i don't know it, i don't know it is, here's the thing with this though is like we've seen what max can do like literally for lap after lap in austin we saw that when he actually wanted to defend properly he could that's the frustrating thing with all of this is that max is so good and then he just has these moments where the red mist descends and he just he just resorts to bully boy tactics and he doesn't need to do it because he's got the car control, he's got the defensive capabilities to be able to hold a car off lap after lap after lap. He can do it. And we saw him do it in Austin. That's what made Austin so infuriating to me. You know, I, I, I just want to clarify one thing else as well, that because I've seen a lot of confusion that, well, you know, what, what's the difference between Lando and Max? Why are their penalties different? So Lando was given a five second penalty for passing off the track in Austin. It should be a 10 second penalty, but they mitigated for the fact that he was in a battle so that's why he only got five seconds again that was clarified by the FIA that there was mitigation there hence five seconds whereas this one with Max cut the first inch the first 10 second penalty absolute cut and dry he was not ahead at the apex his rival was entitled to racing room he did not give it to them he forced them off the track therefore 10 seconds as by the letter of the law um but one thing that really infuriated me in the aftermath of all of this, uh, and I think it's something, it, and it's another group that we should probably say, come on, you should, should do more in this situation. Christian Horner was interviewed and he said, oh, well, we're now in a situation where people are just going to do reckless dive bombs. And I'm like, yeah, why do they have to do that? Because the rules of engagement have been changed to such an extent that drivers now know that in order to have racing room, they just need to have a tip of their car in front of the other. And therefore... You, you know, if you force them off, you know your rival's going to get a penalty. You know, you had GP coming over the radio saying, oh, there was a lot of whinging. It's like, yeah, there was a lot of whinging. 
because A, you forced him off the track, and then B, you know, gave him a receipt, which is incredibly dangerous in motorsport. I mean, we want to talk about dangerous manoeuvres. I mean, come on. It's, you know, Red Bull have enabled Max because they don't, they just let him do what he wants to do. And they enable that behavior by not, by constantly defending him. Sometimes you've just got to come out and say, Max, you know what, mate, that was dumb. Don't do that. You know, I get that, you know, he, you want to defend him and keep him happy, but avoid these controversies. You know, Horner coming out to the press with the telemetry saying that Lando breaks later. I mean, what is this? A clown show? I mean, Christian probably just thought, oh, I can get a whole room of journalists looking at me and talking to me by showing my telemetry. If you want to show anyone that telemetry, show it to the goddamn stewards, you fool. <laughs> oh, say how you really feel, Baxty. But then this is the point. Uh, again, I'm going to devil's advocate you here, <clears throat> Sir Baxty. Th this is why I I I've always said, and still attest to this, I'm still going with this hard, 10 toes down. If there's a man that I want to, if there's a team principal currently on the grid that I want to take into the trenches with me, he has a name, Baxter, and his name is Christian Horner because he goes to that length. Does he, he? He he is the team principal equivalent to Max. Win at our cost, everybody else be damned. He's there, and you might not like it. It might not be within the sporting code or all the the essence of the sport, not within the spirit of the rules, etc. But that dude gets it done. They were due to sack him in 2021. He was this far away, yeah, and he manages yet again by fortuitous slash polemic circumstances to get it done, and he's been getting it done ever since. I think that's just that is a sham. That is just uh, theatre, to use your word, Shez. But he knows that there is lap time in those sorts of things. This is what I still think that Toto Wolf and his, in his inability even to do those sorts of things, to, to stoop down and look for the lap time in the nooks and crannies. I still contend that that lost Lewis Hamilton that championship in 2021. Do it like, I, I get it, Baxty. That, that winning isn't for everyone. But Christian Horn has made it clear that he's looking to... Do you know what I mean? As far as the championship, and there is a championship to be fought for, that Christian Horner, per the Netflix, per his stint in Drive to Survive, that he's willing to stoop down and do whatever it takes. And well, if, he, if he wants to know, talk about winning a championship, he should have hired a better second driver. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Not the constructors, chap. The drivers. I, well, you, know, you know, the joke is, Baxter, I know that... I know that 40% of the employees bonus is will be a function of the constructors championship or whether they lose it they'll lose 40% if they don't make the constructors but I think it's always he can, I, I didn't even know I couldn't even tell you who won the constructors championship back in like two I just don't you, nobody cares right you, you'll know right. you'll know it in 2024 if Max wins the title and Red Bull come third you will definitely know it Oof. and you'll definitely know it if it's not McLaren who win it because McLaren would have had the quickest car all year and won nothing. Nothing. Just, Fair play. Like but... Arsenal Football Club don't win anything. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, I had to take that shot. <laughs> but you hear what I'm saying, though? In three years' time, a potential remember it for the circumstance. Checo Perez and his, and his poor performance will make it memorable. But if you rewind back to, like, 2018... I couldn't, it, mate, I don't even know, constructors, what is that? Who cares even? It's all about the drivers and Christian Honours doing his best in real time to get Max Verstappen over the line. <clears throat> and I think the way that he doesn't do that, Baxter and shares, is by coming out and lambasting his driver before the world's press and media, as if Max hasn't had enough of that already by virtue of Joss and Christian in the media going back and forth, Helmut Marco doing all this, PA, allegation gate, the car's rubbish, Checo Perez can't drive. Do you know what I mean? Christian Horner. He's got, what, if a 40-point lead? Yeah, but Christian Horner, if he's invested in winning as a first priority thing. Then... To be fair, he should have done it years ago. He doesn't Doing it now would be too late, you know, because... But Max has got three championships in his in his back pocket. He should have done it years ago when he was still on the come up. Yeah, well, yeah, true. And and now it's probably a little bit too late, particularly that not very apropos, Baxty, when you consider that Toto, the boy who cried wolf, will drop kick in their chest, Antonelli and George Russell, if it means that they can, he can get a whiff of the signature of Max Verstappen. Now, therefore, probably isn't the best time to start disenfranchising, not currying favour with the only driver in that team seems capable of winning himself anything, let alone championships. Let's talk about Checo Perez. 
shares. Um, does he make it free to the end of 2025? Uh, well, um, Horner's all about performance, he says. So you kind of have to say uh, Mexico really did look like the last nail in the coffin. Um, I mean, he probably should get to the end of the season, but there's. But I'm starting to feel more and more like it's probably not going to happen. I think he's probably got Brazil, and then that's it. Um, Oof. Oof. Um, I've, I've, I've had more than one content creator now say that uh, you know we'll stick Liam Lawson in the Red Bull and bring Daniel Ricciardo back for three more races. Yeah, why not? Um, but right. I, I mean, the, the 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 fact of the matter is Perez. The, the reason we're even having a conversation about how how bad um, Red Bull are doing in the constructors is because poor old Sergio Perez, even in his home race, cannot get the car out of Q1. Um, and then in the race, is struggling to get past the V-carb. You know, uh, he, he, he ended up getting the fastest lap, but doing a Daniel Ricciardo and fin finishing literally last on the road. Sorry, who ended up getting the fastest lap? Shares? Sorry, he didn't get the fastest lap. He went for the fastest lap. My bad, my bad. Fastest lap. You don't get fastest laps for being one second behind Charles Leclerc. Do you know what I mean? You know what, Baxter? Let me throw it to you. To that, sir, you respond how? Well, to Checo, uh, I mean, he's done, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, I've been saying it for ages. He's done. <clears throat> ever since Ever since he put pen to paper on that contract, he has been absolutely woeful. Um, I mean, there's the rumours are are abound that he's going that basically Brazil's it. I mean, honestly, I don't see the point. I, it's not you're not miraculously going to win the constructors championship by dropping Sergio Perez now. You should have done it in the summer when you were actually talking about doing it, but for some reason you decided not to, even though you had Daniel Ricciardo right there. Okay, he's not the Daniel Ricciardo you had before, but he'd probably be more consistent realistically like he won't win you races but he would do enough to win you a championship mm. potentially potentially um but with the pace the ferrari's got right now and the pace the mclaren's got they got no chance there's not just let him get to the end of the season and then tell him he's off rip up that 2025 element of the, the contract and say see you later uh and put liam or it will if they're going to put anyone in it will be liam they'll put him in for next year and He'll probably flip him off as he does it. Oof, techy, techy. But I like that. Harps back to uh, Danny Rick at Monza, Fernando Planalonzo at Monaco doing the same thing. I don't hate that. Showing a bit of uh, bavavoom, a bit of cheek and stuff. Let me, let me. I think you guys. I don't listen. I disagree vehemently with the vigor that both of you guys have criticized Max Verstappen, and then you want to be all nicely, nicely, softly, and gently when it comes to Checo Perez. Let me do it for you. Then, chaps, let me say what I figured you both should have said. Checo Perez has been absolute rubbish for the longest time all season, yeeting it into the barrier when the shareholders were there in person. This dude has been, he's been out-qualified by Logan Sargent more times than he cared to be remembered. And, by the way, he's in an RB20 and Logan Sargent was in a Williams. What are we doing, chaps? This is ridiculous. I don't know how. Listen, thirty million US dollars a year. If indeed he's getting that by virtue of his spot, his Carlos Sim sponsorship, isn't enough at this stage. He spent four point five million US dollars in crash damage. Uh, let's just get rid of him, chat. Like, I mean, put him out of his misery at this stage. Uh, it's not that I don't. I don't. I. I'm not a fan of Checo Perez. But at this stage, chaps, like, surely there's more risk to keeping him than there is from. From letting him go, like what? What? What are we? I well, just, are we, are we just keeping? Uh, so are we? Are we just spinning him off because he's causing a lot of crash damage, or because he's not getting any points? Pe because pe because pe the, the the problem with binning him off is the same problem now that they had in the summer, which is why they didn't take him out of the car because they didn't have anyone to put anyone else to put in the car. Hey, what are you talking about? Shit, the they, they, look. Who look, did they have? Mate. Daniel Ricardo. Mate. Colapinto is there, ready to go. Colapinto is, is there you, now. Uh, he wasn't there in the summer. Okay, so you are you contending that 
All right, but we're dealing with now, right, the circumstance as it stands. But, but Maxi's point you... is right. That what, what is putting Colo Pinto in the car going to do now? The guy that also couldn't get out of Q1, by the way, when his teammate got into Q3. So hang on, Shes. what? So what exactly is Colo Pinto going to do in terms of the Constructors' Championship for, for Red Bull? That it wouldn't Perez be Colo Pinto is... that he signed anyway, would it? It'd be, yeah, it would so, be Lawson or Ricardo they put in the exactly. car. Exactly. So but what, would, what would Ricardo do? Exactly in the, no, in the, the, the constructors championship is dead. Like but, they would, there's no point changing it now. It's correct. So what is the point right now? It would have made more sense in the summer if they had a suitable substitute, but they did not have one then. They may have more suitors now, but right now it's too late for the constructors. And no, what is the point, mate? The point is that this deed is going backwards. He doesn't accrue any points. He's a he's a hazard to Red Bull's health and financial standing. So too reputation. It's deeper than rap now, Shez. You can't keep that dude in the car and each and every single time I look at him, he doesn't get out of Q1. He finishes in eighth. He's a gazillion miles behind Max Verstappen. Anyone, Shez, I said, I said it to you now and I'll say it to you again. Anyone, just put anyone else in the car. It doesn't matter because that dude's proven himself beyond reasonable doubt, incapable of doing what he needs to do in that car. The cost now outweighs the benefit going forward as far as Checo Perez is concerned. So too, there is the opportunity cost shares. The more that you keep that dude in the car, the less light you are to sign the next Max Verstappen, which I think is the key play here when Colapinto comes in four races and he hasn't, he hasn't dropped beneath P12. These F2 buds are proving themselves serious while capable of doing a job. And the longer that you hold on to one Checo Perez, formerly known as the Mexican Minister of Defence, the longer or the more that you rule yourself out of signing the next Max Verstappen. That's why, Chazinho, you can't afford to keep him now because the opportunity cost is too high. Now that all these F2 buds, Color Pinto, Behrman, bloody whoever else are proving themselves capable of of doing a job much better than Checo Perez notwithstanding all of his bloody experience what are we doing here I mean let me just contend this because if they change Checo now right that would basically it would be the most unread ball thing ever because Red Bull fight to the very end we know that's been in their DNA ever since they came onto the grid when they first started challenging for championships in 2009 Everyone was saying, oh, Braun are going to win the championship. But Red Bull did not give up until it was done. That is how they operate. If they replace Checo now, that would be them admitting that they're going to finish third. And, you know, because, I mean, look, Max is going to win the drivers. Uh, we know that. he's Lando's not going to bridge that gap. It would be them tacitly admitting that they that they're not they can't win the constructors. Well, you know, what, what would be the point of that? Honestly, the you know, it, it'd be stupid. It's, it would be like changing your tie when you catch your pants. Like, seriously. It's uh, it's not a spot play. Baxter, to use the financial, term, financial services terminology, this is futures now. This is what we're trading. It's not to go and win the, the constructors because in all likelihood, that is gone. That that train has left the station. <coughs> but what about next year? Like I said to you, the op it's the opportunity cost of missing out on the next one whilst this dude is sat in your car doing absolutely nothing, failing each and every single race weekend to get out of... Q not Q2, chaps. Q1 in an RB20. Yeah, for all its foibles and it can't turn and it's understeer and only Max Verstappen can stick... Q1, that's what we're talking about, chaps. And you guys are going to advocate to me that Checo Perez has done enough to deserve the seat. And no, no, smart. I do not think he oh, has no, done no, enough no, no, no. to All deserve right, that then. seat. You, you know that's not what we're saying. You absolutely know that's yeah. not what we're saying. The point here is that they, ha they have missed the opportunity to put a different driver in that car. Putting Liam Lawson in the, in the Red Bull after a year on the sidelines is not going to do him any good. It's going to make him look like a complete mug. And and what are you going to do? You're going to stick either Daniel Ricciardo or Franco Colapinto, who Williams are not going to let go to stick in a V-carb. It's not like it's a step up to go from a Williams to a V-carb. Why would he do that? And you're then going to muddy your own driver pool when you've already got Isaac Hadjar waiting in the wings to come in and Arvin Lindblad sitting behind him. You're going to muddy all that by sticking Franco Colapinto in, who's had two good races and one absolute dud in Mexico. Mate, 
you put him in because he's better than what you've got currently. As far as the 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 suite of four drivers that you have in there in the first instance, I'm not I'm not advocating for sticking Franco in there instead of Checo. That makes no sense. But oh, I understand what you're saying. Promote Lawson, plug in Franco, or who I don't even care. Shes at this point, Hajar, Lim, whatever. At this stage, you are hindering their development by bottlenecking, keeping in there as far as your suite, your portfolio of drivers, as far as a Red Bull racing family. This chap, just because of 20 million US, no, the 20 million US dollars per year isn't enough now. It's gone too far. That's why you switch him out, Shez, because you're the laughing stack of the... Those Red Bull guys, the ones back at the factory, they don't want, they don't want to change this dude's tyres. They're not interested in that. Team morale is low because he's costing them 40% of their bonus. I don't want to talk to Checo Perez and listen to his moaning about the car whilst Max was slapping his doing all these heroics. Why? Get rid of that chap, man. It's too... Like, I, I think for his own sake, this is this has gone too far now, chaps. Put somebody If they're going to replace him, they're not going to replace him with Lawson. They'll replace him with Ricardo and give Ricardo a three, four race swan song and actually give him a proper goodbye. That's literally the, that what... They're not going to put Lawson in because Lawson pissed them off. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, there were, I, I think it might be Danny Rick. I, I'm hearing, depending on who you're talking to, I'm hearing the potential they might sack him off before Brazil and that Danny Rick might... T- I would love for that, mate. That would make me so happy. Yeah, it'd be fun. Can't continue but, but... to celebrate mediocrity out. Mediocrity out. Like, it's nonsense. What are we... You're, you're going to be celebrating mediocrity with Ricardo in that car too. Let, let's be real about this. Doesn't he is not of... the same Ricardo that was oh, in yeah, that yeah. car in 2018. True. Right? But sometimes, shows you've got to just roll the dice and hope that sure. you get a six. Because at the moment, you know, you definitely know when you roll the Checo Perez dice, you are not getting sixes. Shes, not not now, not ever. That train has left the station. He's doing one of these with a gaseous substance that was his prime, trying to gr- grab onto it. And he, he it's just going through his fingers. It's long for him, mate. Move on to the next one. Go on, let's talk about Brazil. In fact, before, all right, rewind camera. We need to talk about Carla Sainz and Charles Leclerc, don't we? And then, as a very, not to bury the lead, it saddens me. And it's, it's never more apropos than now to talk about Carlos Sainz. Yeah, the man that they passed up to keep Checo Perez in anticipation that this dude all of a sudden was going to become a world beater because Singapore and Baku were up next. What are we doing? Carlos Sainz Jr. again makes it clear that he's still still a fantastic God-tier peddler. Shares. How, how did you ingest Carlos Sainz putting your guy Modern day journalazy under under manners for once this season. Correct. I think the way you characterize that is absolutely correct. Brilliant performance, but it was for once. Because if if he was doing that consistently across the entire season, then yeah, there'd be an argument to say keep him and sack off Charles Leclerc. But he has not been doing that consistently all season. And this is a standard Carlos science season in which he has magnificent highs but then regresses back to a mean that isn't as good as his teammate and he often sticks it in the wall as well so yes a brilliant brilliant weekend that he had uh great great uh, performance in qualifying really really excellent in the race when he uh, when he as martin brundle put it in comms uh, has the bit between his teeth he is imperious i agree with that but he just it's just that he doesn't have the bit between his teeth often enough for this to be a, a season long endeavor but but for but but that's why you have charles leclerc in the car because race on race he's been more consistent and that's borne out in the qualifying head to head the pace head to head head to head the points head to head Oh, like, you're not wrong, sir. You're not wrong. To that, Sir Baxter, you respond how? Well, I agree with Shez. Carlos was incredible all weekend. Two laps that would have been good enough for pole in qualifying. You know, ballsy move on Max into into turn one and then dominated the race thereafter. But he won the race. Didn't stop him from being eliminated from world championship contention. Oh. He's officially out of the world championship now. So it's now between... Uh, four of them technically at the moment if you do the maths um 
it's you know he will not beat Charles this season. The champagne you've had on ice all year, this is I'm afraid going to have to stay on ice. And you have to find another reason to pop it. Um, you know, I think Carlos is is trying to enjoy his last few races at Ferrari because realistically he knows he's going into a Williams team that are not going to be contending for race wins. You know, that might give him the odd Q3 appearance, but he's not going to be consistently at the podium near the front or anything else. Uh, he knows that Williams is a longer term project. And I think he knows he just wants to take advantage of that and and get the results that he needs to. Um, you know, he's won four races now. Um, incredible performance. Uh, fully deserving of it. He had Charles under manners in every in the two main facets of the weekend in quality in the race. Um but he pratted around with contracts, didn't he? And just ended up kind of having to go with Williams. I mean, he wanted a bigger contract from Red Bull, they weren't willing to give it to him. He wanted a bigger contract from Mercedes of rumors to be believed. They didn't want to know. He pratted around with a Ferrari contract, so they said, Well, actually, Lewis Hamilton's free, so we're gonna go get him. Um, so yeah, I, I think he just wants to enjoy these last few races and he will, I think he wanted one more win. He's going to want another one, certainly. And with the pace of that car, he can get it. What, what is this chaps? What, what, what have I, uh, what have I entered into? Is this some sort of car last science haters PLC? Mate, this is chaos. You guys are being too, look. Let me tell you this, next year when that, that SF25 or whatever iteration they call it, next year when that car's good, you know they need to thank for that, all of that development and that feedback. Carlos Sainz Jr. says, you're never going to tell me that Charles Leclerc, as a percentage of the whole, has contributed more to the development of this car. That, yeah, mate, I'm going. I've had enough. This is nonsense. I can't even tolerate this, Shez. Are you going to just be that disingenuous? Let me just make it clear so that we're singing for the same, same hinge sheet. You're telling me that Charles Leclerc has contributed more to the SF24 and it now being a race winner of a machine than has Carlos Sainz Jr. Mm. Uh, explain yourself. Approach the sure. stand. Sure. It's 50 50. What? Sure. The, the, the whole reason that Ferrari have gone down this particular development route is because they were following what Charles Leclerc wanted at the end of 2023. That's why he got all the poles and was as consistent as he was at the end of 2023 and why the car behaves the way it does right right now the reason that Charles Leclerc was off the po was a little bit off his teammates pace at the beginning of the season and then came back because he did what he needed to do to get the best out of himself and also to get Ferrari to start to do what he wanted them to do that is the story of this season Carlos is an incredibly hard worker, absolutely brilliant. And he does he does eventually get to the level that his teammate can get to. But over the course of a season, Charles always has a little bit more. And Ferrari have responded to that over the course of the last few races of 2023 and this season. The result of that is borne out in the results. Couldn't disagree more, chap. I just disagree, bro. I, I think, think you're doing an I think you're doing an eye test on it and going Carlos Sainz is a little bit a little bit more smart in his calls and a little bit more vociferous I, in the in the in the garage and, and saying that, that that that's that means that he's contributing more to the development of the car. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir, a little bit more. I, I Shez, come on. Let's have a let's have a big boy conversation. You know sure, who Carlos let's do it. you know who Carlos Sainz Jr. is as far as development. I can't believe and you two Baxter, I can't believe that we're arguing on the Shakedown podcast that Charles Leclerc is even in the same stratosphere as development. Of course okay, look, let's not confuse point to point speed in absolute terms. Charles Leclerc is here and Carlos Sainz is a step down. But as far as developing a car, communicating in a way that's succinct back to the engineers, translating the messages that he's getting back from the car as far as load, your all of the necess all of the necessary bits and bobs requisite to building yourself a championship winning car. You're telling me that Charles Leclerc is better at all that stuff than is Carlos Sainz Jr. He that's has what been we're saying. So okay, can you explain to me 
why the car has moved further towards what Charles needs and further away from what Carlos needs over the course of this season. If it's not because Charles has been more forceful in in uh, in getting what he wants. I mean, uh, if we're playing hypothetical games here, chap, there could be a number of reasons. The okay. fact that Carlos is leaving next year, the fact that Charles Leclerc is the <clears throat> chosen one, it could be a number of different but if, reasons. But if Carlos talking. is the guy that's directing development, then, then surely it doesn't matter whether he's leaving the team or not. I, I think you're getting things twisted, Shaz. You're Go saying on. that they'd... Are you saying that Carlos Sainz, if he were the god tier developer that I'm making him out to be, would that Ferrari? I'm not saying he isn't. That Ferrari would allow him to develop a car that only worked for him and not a fast car. Is that what you're saying, Shaz? I don't understand the question, but why? Why would they? Whether Carlos is leaving or not, if Carlos makes the car faster, why would they not develop in that direction? Well, they have developed in that direction. But they haven't. They've developed in Charles' direction and further away from what Carlos wants from the car. No. And that has made the car mm. faster. No, 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 no. This is, this, see, let me lean into your theses here, shows it's... that you have trot out that a fast car in this instance just so happens to tick Charles Leclerc's box. Carlos Sainz has been instrumental in developing that. Talk to anybody at Ferrari and they'll tell you as much that Scuderia are a better for Carlos Sainz's oh, pre presence. No, no doubt about because that. Because shares of his feedback, Charles Leclerc can't give you that. As brilliant as the dude is when it comes to driving a car, he doesn't have that in his locker, bruv. Over the past three years, you can see the cerebral nature of Carlos Sainz Jr. Not only in his feedback and the way that he communicates with his engineers, but his ability to think through strategy in real time, the constructive challenge that he pushes back, his ability to bloody leverage the toe the Lando Norris, there. like he's that dude. Chat, he's it's, not even Charles Leclerc yeah, cerebrally. It just, it just doesn't seem particularly clever if that then means the car is developed away from what you like. Well, if 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 your going concern is Charles Leclerc, chap, what you're saying is absolutely correct. Chess in a vacuum. But knowing what we know that Carlos Sainz Jr. won't be there next year, and that Charles Leclerc is the chosen one, like, sure, uh, am I being daft here? I, I don't I don't understand what the question is. Baxley, talk to me, sir. So the way I see it is that I actually think Charles and Carlos are relatively unique in that they actually work quite well together as teammates. Like you know, they're not a teammate pairing that really is that like on track. They can be a bit combustible, but it's all forgotten about once the helmet comes off. And I think they work really hard together because I think at some point this year they saw an opportunity. It's like, look, we're probably not going to win the drivers this year, but we can win the constructors championship. And I and that's really, and I meant to say this in my last bit, is that that's why they both of them have got the bit between their teeth because that is what they are putting their drivers' ambitions aside to go for the constructors championship so much so that I think they might actually be the favourites to win it. And I think they have both worked to getting that car in the in a place where they can do that. I think in Mexico. Carlos set his car up better than Charles did. The, the running theory was that Charles had a better race car and Carlos had a better quali car. That didn't bear out on track. Carlos just had the better set up car. Whereas I think Charles is getting better at getting what he wants out of the car on the technical side and his feedback is getting better. He's probably learned from Carlos in that respect. And then he's got, you know, like the platinum grade you know, upgrade coming in in Lewis next year and watching how he gives feedback, you know, and how he will get the team to set up the car and and talk to them about development and everything else because, and that's just another opportunity for him to learn. So it's, I think that they've actually worked quite closely together, which is why I said 50-50 when this discussion started, um, that yes, Carlos has great feedback, knows how to get a car developed the right way. But I agree with the point that, Carlos is the one leaving, so they would be naturally aligned to move it more towards Charles. That's a fair point. Um, much in the same way that Mercedes are probably moving that Mercedes away from Lewis towards George. Makes complete sense. Um, but what I would say is, is that I think because they've just they've seen this opportunity to get a constructors championship, that is what they are gunning for, and that is what they are hoping to get to get that extra money to put more development into 2025 and 2026 so that they that they are ready to go with Charles and Lewis next year. Oof. 
it's a bit techy this Baxty. I, I hope I desperately hope that you're wrong as far as Carlos and, and Charles in the draw as as remote as that is a possibility. I just think Carlos deserves this, mate. Like if Karmic Justice is a thing, if Karmic Justice is on job, then he'll go over maybe not beat Charles quite, but he'll go very well over the next three races or so. Like he's I, I rate him highly and that the, the fact that he finds himself in a bloody Williams next year is an absolute it's it's proof positive that F1 is nothing if not a piranhas tank and uh, people don't... Nice guys tend to finish last in Formula 1. Chaos, gents, you guys have been legends. Do me a favour. If you are listening on a podcasting platform, do me a favour. Follow Five Stars also. If you're watching this on the YouTubes, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Et al, por favor. That has been Sir Baxty. Catch him on... Baxty B F one. That has been the guy they call Shez, otherwise known as the A side. Catch him at Ty GP. You guys have been legends. I've been Cameron CC. Do me a favour between now and next time. As always, look, but never stare.